Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. I cannot attend SMA in person, so I record this video to introduce our work, Zero Inflated Exponential Family Embeddings. This is a joint work with my postdoc advisor, David Bly. Let's start from word embedding. The objective of word embedding is to find vector representations of words. And the method is to predict the presence of a word given its context. For example, we have this sentence, and we take out the word at position i, illustrate. And then we use the vector representations of the word before it and the word after it to predict whether the word in the middle is illustrate. We fit this conditional probability at every position for the entire corpus. And then we can find vector representations for all words. And the idea of word embedding carries to item embedding. The objective is the same here, to find vector representations of items. And the method is similar, to predict the count or value of an item given its context. In this example, we have a shopping basket with bagel, cream cheese, and egg, and their counts. We can take out cream cheese and use the vector representation of bagel and egg to predict the count of the cream cheese. Or we take out a bagel, use cream cheese and egg as the context and use their vector representations to predict the count of bagel. This idea is formally formulated as exponential family embedding. Exponential family embedding uses an exponential family distribution as the conditional we just discussed. It has three ingredients. The first ingredient, context, defines the, the context of an atom J and its count. The context is a, a set of related items and their counts. The second ingredient is uh, the conditional distribution. We need to choose one distribution from uh, the exponential family. The third one is the embedding structure. It means when one atom appears somewhere in the data, it always yields the same vector as its representation. Essentially, it is the definition of the indices of these vectors. The parameters to learn for this model are these vectors for all items. The standard exponential family embedding does not consider data sparsity problem. Actually, in our data, we have many zeros. For example, if I go to Walmart and I get a shopping basket with bagel, cheese, and egg, but I don't have bread in my basket, I don't have a kayak in my basket, you know, there are kayaks in Walmart. The question is, do we want to predict zeros? Some zeros are useful, but some are not. For example, if I buy three bagels for my breakfast, then I don't need bread anymore. So there is one type of negative correlation here. But for kayak, I don't buy a kayak because I don't use it not because I have three bagels. So these two types of zeros should be explained differently. The two types of zeros can be explained by the explorer model, which is originally proposed for recommendation systems. The idea is similar here. Given the context, we say the bread is exposed to relations with other items. So we want to use the embedding distribution to capture such relations 
and fit the zero value for it. But for kayak, we say it is not exposed to relations with other items. So we want to leave uh, these zero entries alone. But the question is, how can we decide whether an item is exposed or not? We use exposure indicators. For each item J, we use one exposure indicator BJ, sampled, sampled from a Bernoulli distribution with probability UJ. We cannot observe these exposure indicators, so they are hidden variables. We can use some covariates to fit the exposure probability. For example, if the purchase is a grocery purchase, and then the items in the food category will have higher exposure probability. But uh, the exposure probability for kayak is, will be very low. If we don't have such covariates, and then we only use this intercept term to fit the exposure probability, it often represents the popularity of the atom. Now we can formally define our zero inflated embedding model. We want to fit the count for some atom with the context. We have the exposure probability for this atom. We first use the exposure probability to sample uh, the exposure indicator for this atom. And then we use this indicator to decide which distribution to use uh, to get the count. Here, p hat is the basic embedding distribution. And then we sum over these two possibilities to get the count. So since the count is uh, from a zero inflated distribution, uh, we call our model zero inflated embedding model. Another way to understand our model is that uh, it can automatically downweight zero entries. We show this by calculating the log likelihood from the EM lower bound. We first calculate the posterior distribution. You can see that if an entry is zero, then the posterior probability mu j will be less than one. And then the probability of the log likelihood is shown below. For zero entries, uh, the log probability of embedding model is downweighted by mu j here. So entries, uh, zero entries will contribute less to this uh, log likelihood. Let's see how we learn the model. We learn model parameters by maximizing the log likelihood over all data. Remember, we have many baskets, and we can stratify each basket to get many pairs uh, for this conditional distribution. So we have many, many pairs to learn the model parameter, and these pairs are indexed by i. Sometimes there are ma multiple items involved um, on the left side of this conditional probability. For example, word embedding with categorical distribution. If we compare word embedding with Bernoulli distribution and uh, categorical distribution. So for Bernoulli distribution, essentially we want to predict whether a word J is at position I. So this binary variable here is about word J only. This is covered by our previous model. But for categorical distribution, we want to predict which word is the talking at uh, position i. So the word wi at this position involves all words in the vocabulary. In this case, how do we define our exposure model? We use an exposure indicator vector uh, to indicate 
which word in the vocabulary is exposed or not. And then in our model, uh, in the conditional probability, we only consider these words exposed in the, uh, from the vocabulary. Um, but this model is much harder to solve than the previous one we have talked because we have a long hidden vector B, bi, but we managed to find an approximate solution to this problem. You can see the details in the paper. Then we evaluate our embedding model through experiments. We have two baselines, the exponential family embedding model and the one with the uh, zero entries manually downweighted and the weight is set to 0 0.1. And we evaluate all models on four embedding tasks shown below. Let's first see some quantitative results. In general, our zero inflated embedding models improve the held out log likelihood. Here, we calculate two types of log likelihood, one for all entries the other one for all uh, for positive entries only. From the results of bird embedding here, we can see that our models improve the log likelihood of all entries significantly. Then we investigate the embedding quality of our embedding models. Especially, we show that the embedding vectors op obtained by our embedding models are more robust to data sparsity. In this experiment, we randomly set positive entries of one item to zero, and then we compare the embedding vectors before and after this data sparsifying procedure. The embedding vectors are more, uh, are more robust to data sparsity if they have smaller changes because of this uh, data specifying procedure. In the uh, bird embedding task, uh, we get result in this table and uh, we can see that uh, our models can get uh, robust, um, more robust embedding vectors than the two baselines. We also have done some model check. Specifically, we want to check which items are more exposed. In movie embedding, we plot out all movies by their rating frequency, x-axis, and uh, their exposure probability, y-axis. And the color here represents the average rating uh, received by each movie. We can see that if one movie is uh, uh, rated frequently, then it has higher exposure probability. And for movies with the same rating frequency, uh, movies with lower ratings will have higher exposure probability. We also have some results from bird embedding. The bird species uh, screech owl is actively is active only at night. In our learned model, it is less exposed in observations during the day. So this is uh, reasonable. The last experiment is word embedding. In this experiment, we use part of speech text at the covariates to fit the exposure probability. We found out that part of speech text explain away some grammatical uh, differences between words. For example, plural and singular. We can see this from the table below. The six words at the top row are references, and we use embedding vectors to calculate their nearest neighbors. The embedding vectors obtained by our model often put the plural form of a word as its nearest neighbor. This type of embedding can be very useful in many applications. Now we conclude. 
Our zero inflated embeddings use the exposure component to explain away unrelated zeros. In this way, they can automatically downweight zero entries. They can fit, but the, they can better fit the data and improve the embedding quality. Thank you for your attention.